Hi, I'm Larry Custer, Senior Marketing Specialist, Sunflower Seed and Tillage out of Duluth, Georgia. Welcome to the Agco display, the sunflower portion of this at the, uh, the Illinois 2013 Farm Progress Show. So you bought a new sunflower disc and it's been delivered. Congratulations, wise choice. Let me show you how to uh, set the unit for, for proper field operations. We're going to begin by actually attaching it to the tractor and adjusting the drawbar and uh, you want to make sure that the, uh, the uh, drawbar, uh, the tongue is attached at the right position on the implement. The Sunflower 1400 series has three different attaching points, low, medium, and high. Uh, drawbar come in, drawbars come in varying heights, so we want to be sure that we're pulling the tongue of the unit in straight fashion, parallel to the ground. So if our drawbar in this case is about 19 and a half, we're going to be in the center attaching point so that we're not pulling up on the drawbar or pulling down on it. We've got a nice straight line of draft. The next thing you're going to want to do before you uh, take the implant to the field is to uh, raise the unit all the way up, extend the cylinders completely out, and hold the valve for about a minute, two minutes. This is, uh, forces all the oil through the system, and any air that could be trapped in the hydraulic system will be carried out and delivered back to the tractor's reservoir. So they have nothing in here but oil. We're going to do that on the lift cylinders, we're going to do it on the wing cylinders as well to make sure that they are purged and also this unit has the uh, hydraulic fore and aft, we don't want to forget and uh, not do that. So we want all the cylinders purged. Now we're, beginning, now we're ready to level the unit side to side. We're going to raise the unit all the way up, let it down, watch these cylinders to make sure that they all move in unison. We're going to lower the implement down to where the blades almost touch the ground but they not quite. So we're going to uh, adjust our fore and aft level and get the front gang and the rear gang equal distance from the soil. And then we can start measuring um, our wheel height from the uh, main frame. We're going to start actually in the center section. You're going to measure down from the top of the frame, putting a straight edge across two frame members. Measure down to a fixed point. In this case, there's a, a pivot bearing in the uh, walking tandem. There's a couple flat washers there. Measure from there up to your straight edge. Do that in the center section. Both sides make sure that they're the same. Bring that measurement then out to the wing and make it match. To make it match you may have to uh, do some adjusting and that adjusting adjustment is right here on this uh, threaded anchor bolt. Getting all that the same and being mindful that the uh, the wing wheels might be smaller than the uh, center section wheels. Uh, you may have to add a half inch or, or, or more for the working radius, which is this point down to the ground, to make that all even. Once we've done that, we can uh, now take the unit to the field, put it in the soil. If we want to adjust it to maximum depth, we're going to uh, pull the wheels all the way off the ground and uh, let the unit work itself in. Once we've done that, say uh, 150, 200 yards would stop the tool at that point. We would uh, let the hydraulics extend the cylinders, putting the wheels on the ground, and we're going to do that until we see this frame start to move. As soon as the frame starts to move, we're going to stop, set our single point depth control here uh, at that position, and uh, we'll have the unit set for maximum depth. We're almost finished. There's one more adjustment to make. That is on our gauge wheels. We want these to carry some weight to uh, prevent the front gangs from ever gouging, but we don't want to carry so much weight that we prevent the disc from penetrating. So we're going to adjust this wheel down now to the surface of the ground, put enough pressure on it, and we can determine if we're about right if we can kick the wheel and it slightly moves. We'll take that measurement from this side, from the center of the bolt to the center of the bolt, take it over here and put it on the uh, opposite side, and we've got our disc set. We're going to check the uh, fore and aft level by, by seeing what the uh, center uh, results are at the very center of the disc where the rear gangs come together. If there's a valley there, we know that the rear gangs need to go a little bit deeper and pull some more dirt back in. If there's a ridge there, we know that we're too deep and the rear gangs need to come up. Very easily done with the hydraulic fore and aft leveling. We get that to where the uh, center of that uh, rear gang is smooth. We've got a level disc match the horsepower so we're pulling the unit between five and six miles an hour so we're not exceeding that. The thing with the disc carrel is if you're going faster than that and you throw soil further with the front gang then you can reach it with the rear gang to pull it back in you'll ridge the tool. You'll ridge the field. The tool is designed to operate about six miles an hour max speed. 
So congratulations on your choice to pick a, a sunflower disc and put it to work. Follow these easy steps and it will work beautifully for you and leave a nice level uh, field finish. Thank you.